Repos deck. And uh, this was a deck that just featured not too long ago. Um, you saw it, if you watched the last feature match, uh, you would have seen it with uh, Zoroark GX paired with Golisopod GX, which is a very, very interesting build and one that we liked a lot. So much so that we have the deck for you here. So, yeah, so this was actually uh, Robin's build. So we just saw him on stream. So Robin featuring the Zoroark GX. And what I found very interesting in the interview with Joe just now. So Joe asked him, OK, so you paired Golisopod with Zoroark. And Robin immediately corrected him and said, no, 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 I'm pairing <laughs> Zorak with Golisipod. So Golisipod is the supporter. He's helping Zorak win some of the not so favorable matchups like right. the, the bus wall, which we haven't seen too much yeah. of today. But Zorak in its own is the main event of this deck. And you can see why the trade, of course, the tradeability, uh, giving him access to two more cards. Um, yeah, well, trading in one card that he doesn't mm -hmm. need so much. And then Righteous beating 20 times, 20 damage for each of your Pokemon in play. So this can this can build up very quickly. Absolutely. And it's uh, just, uh, I mean, 210 is a pretty good HP to have. Um, it's weak to fighting, which is something to be concerned about. Um, but it does have a minus 20 resistance to Psychic, which is pretty good, considering how popular Garbodor is in the format. So that's certainly something that kind of goes in its favor. Again, trade is uh, a bit like a uh, diving draw, if you remember from a on from Dark Explorers has that ability again just adds so much consistency to the deck and obviously when you have more Zoroark GX's it kind of stacks so it means you can use it more and add more consistency to your deck. Yeah as a general rule if you see there's a Zoroark being uh, released by the Pokemon company you can be sure that it's playable <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you just have to pick up a couple of copies and the same is true of the Zoroark GX. We've also seen some of the builds that are also in featuring the regular Zoroark from Breakthrough because it's also very powerful mm. and it's punishing the opponent for playing Pokemon himself or by Absolutely. herself so because it does 30 more damage for each Pokemon that he or she has in uh, on his bench. So that's Zorak and it partners very well with Golisopod. Golisopod GX, which has the first impression attack, which is what it's predominantly used for, is that attack. So if Golisopod was on the bench and it gets switched to the active, it deals 30 damage plus the additional um, damage on top. So in total you are doing, so 30 plus 90 will be 120 damage. When you pair that with a choice band, you are hitting 150 damage just for a single grass energy, which is insane. This is just insane, and it puts so much pressure on in the early uh, game. And then in the final rounds of the last match, we saw that Robin used Mellow and to be able to then use Armor Press or Crossing Cut in that case to deal 150 damage with the GX attack. And Mellow in that case partners so well with Zorak GX. Absolutely, because you just put the two cards, any two cards that you want, search your deck, put them on your top of the deck, and then you just use Trade. You draw those two cards. It's like, uh, it's, it reminds me a lot of like teammates or twins, if you remember that card, where um, you would just take any two cards from your deck. That's effectively what it is when you do have Zoroark out. Um, but just, yeah, such a very well thought out com uh, combination he has there um, but yeah it's um, I mean sort of going into that more so a uh, four puzzle of time is very very interesting yeah, the puzzle of time is making a return here. Also, Joe mentioned it. We see it uh, quite often in the expanded format. Here we have it now in the standard format because uh, Zora gives him so much more meaning. Not only have, do you have access to more cards with the tradeability, but you can also discard stuff and then you can reuse it with the puzzle of time. So puzzle of time coming in really, really handy here for this deck. And so, as uh, Robin said, he could reuse Acerola up to seven times. And Acerola, you can wow. find here free copies of them. <laughs> wow, it's, it's just absolutely crazy, isn't it? And not to mentioned that um, Puzzle of Time actually has a lot of uses in the sense that you just uh, you can puzzle a time and just look at the top three cards of your deck um, and then obviously use Trade to draw into it. But Acerola, um, I mean, if your Zorak has any damage counters on it, you can just pick it up and yeah, or Zorak or Golisopod, should I say, um, have any damage counters on it, you just pick it up and you can just more or less put it straight back down again because it is a stage one. It's not a stage two Pokemon. So you don't have to go through the stages or use Rare Candy. And it's just crazy to think that you can use this up to like seven times in one game. Yeah, Acerola is really denying prize cards, so if you have uh, Pokemon uh, like uh, Golisipod, like Zorak, that feature many HP, many hit points, uh, it really is tough for your opponent to pick up those one-hit KOs, and if they don't, Acerola is here to save them, put them back into their hand, right back onto the bench, and uh, start all over again. Talking about synergies, however, of course, if you think about Golisipod, that deals more damage when it comes mm -hmm. from the bench, you have your boy, 
Your boy Guzma, <laughs> four your copies. Bo <laughs> your boy Guzma, yes, he is in the deck, and he serves a few uh, a few purposes in this, in this deck. Obviously, it has that Lysander ability or that Lysander effect, where you bring up something. But if Golisopod is sitting on your bench and you promote to active with the effect of Guzma, you do get that bumped out uh, first impression attack for 120 damage. So it just serves so many good purposes in the, in the deck and makes your decks you know more flexible. Not to mention, you have Parcel of Time as well. If you want to get a Guzma back, you absolutely can. Yeah, if you need them, maybe even uh, six times or even more. In this case, you could even uh, recover it eight times, up to eight Guzmas there. Well, uh, that is probably going to be uh, more than enough. What I found very interesting when I looked at the deck list is the return of Enhanced Hammer here. Yeah, I was actually just about to point that out, is that I have seen over the course of the tournament not too much Enhanced Hammer, but when it has been played, it's been pretty detrimental. Um, people are committing a lot of energy, especially to like Gardevoir and things like that. Um, double color energy and then if you hit Hinahan's hammer and you can get rid of that energy that can put them back a turn or two you know um, not to mention obviously you know Zoroark functions off a double colorless energy if you play against the mirror and you enhance hammer that is really crucial I think yeah enhanced hammer and uh, double colorless energy maybe uh, in the meter game you can see how the meter game evolves just by looking at how many enhanced hammers are played out there if many people are playing enhanced hammer people are a little bit worried about playing decks that heavily rely on special energy mm. like double colorless energy then enhanced hammer in a return is not played that often because the double colors energy go down in the sure. meter game and then it starts all over again. So it's a circle <laughs> of meter game. Isn't that beautiful? Absol <laughs> Absolutely. And also with um, uh, Enhanced Hammer, a lot of rainbow energy is being played at the moment. So it has a lot of uses in that sense. Um, but yeah, and obviously you have the Tapu Koko, which actually um, does add up some numbers because when you... Um, when you have 120 damage from your Golisopods and you add a choice band into the equation, that hits 150. If you can use a flying flip, which deals 20 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon, um, that then adds up 170, which does get knockout on things like Tapu Lele GX. Yeah, that is very, very important. So Tapu Koko helping with the math. We've seen this also in round number two, where we had quite a couple of uh, cards that were helping with the uh, math, like, uh, for example, Professor Kukui mm. out there and uh, sometimes even Delmise for the yeah. metal decks. So that's very, very interesting to point out that Tapu Koko is obviously very much an option in decks that are featuring the double colors energy like this one, which is playing four copies. Yeah, and uh, something that actually I just spotted just now, and I didn't realize he played so many of them, is three Bridget. Free three Bridget. Three Bridget. That uh, is rather aggressive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that literally just guarantees you a Bridget turn one. I mean, it's so powerful, Bridget, but over the course of this week, or over the course of today, more so, um, people have just been playing one copy, and even Decidueye decks, who rely on having Bridget turn one, have been playing two copies maximum. So to play three copies of Bridget is insane. I was also thinking, th so what is Bridget about here? Of course, Bridget is the number one uh, supporter of choice yeah. during your round number one. But in game number three of the last match, I really saw how it played out. So Robin searched for three Zoruas, put mm. them on the bench. And in turn number two, all of a sudden, we had three Zorua, uh, Zorox oh. GX wow. out there. And so with all this drawing engine out there, with all this offensive power, he just ran over. Right. And he took down the match. So Bridget really coming in handy here. Sure, absolutely. And uh, again, it's just... The, the ideal, and we've sh we can't stress this enough over the course of the weekend, uh, the ideal started to go first. Obviously, you have your Tapu Lele GX, which has the Wanda Tag ability. You search out uh, any supporter from your deck, and then you get your um, you get your Bridget, which searches out your basics, and then you put it on the bench. Um, obviously, Tapu Lele is a Pokemon, so it can be searched out with things like Ultra Ball. And not to mention that Tapu Lele is, um, and as we've seen, a very decent attacker in its own right. And uh, yeah, so as I said, we have uh, Tapu Lele and going back as well, um, just the one Mewtwo and the one Mr. Mime. So let's have a look at Mewtwo for a bit. Um, so Mewtwo does have the Psychic attack, um, which and it has 130 HP. Uh, Psychic, which deals uh, 20 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Again, this is really, really useful against things like Gardevoir GX. Yeah, whatever is using up lots of energy is going to be punished by Mewtwo. Also, its psychic typing is going to be useful against the likes of, for example, Buzzwall. We haven't seen Buzzwall uh, that often here. Mm. I think we only saw it in one single match all day. Yeah, it's weird because um, so during um, when I had a bit of time, I went out onto the floor and people are telling me they've seen a lot of Buzzwall being played, but I haven't seen any Buzzwall on stream. Um, I just thought that it, that it was kind of scared off by the metagame just because of how good 
Garbodor is. Um, but apparently Buzzwall is definitely out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it certainly serves that purpose that it can hit Buzzwall for weakness. Um, but I think the main use is against things like Garbodor, where you are able... Uh, Garbodor, beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> Guard of YGX, where you are able to obviously deal massive amounts of damage when they overcommit. So, uh, but again, a very, very uh, good addition to the deck. And of course, we have Mr. Mime. Uh, who can forget Mr. Mime with a bench barrier ability? <laughs> yeah, whatever is targeting your bench, uh, Mr. Mime is going to make sure that this is not happening. So all the damage that is dealt to bench Pokemon, uh, like for example, the Buzzwall is doing a very similar attack than we've seen from Landorus uh, EX, obviously, um, is going to be blocked by Mr. Mime. Uh, in the last couple of matches, we haven't seen uh, it uh, to being too useful, but I'm pretty sure we are going to see Robin in day number two, on maybe even on Sunday, right. 